Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie if you're new here and today we are going to be going through 10 books that I want to read by the end of the year. So it's kind of like my end of year TBR, some ones that I'm going to be prioritising, buying or reading because I already have the physical copy. Now I've had such a great year so far, we're on August now and I've read 51 books and my goal for the year was 50 so, so we've absolutely smashed it out of the park and I'm just loving every second of it and this journey. So let's just get into it. Um, it's going to be a mix of probably romance and fantasy because those are the things that I'm loving a lot at the minute. And we'll start off with our first book, which I actually have the physical copy of, which is The Crimson Moth by Kristen Cicerelli. I've probably just butchered that, so I apologise, but that's how I think it is pronounced. So I was kindly ferried this by someone that I have connected with on over on Book Talk. I'll put my Book Talk here if you guys don't already follow, please go and do. But yeah, I was so st stoked to have this because I've seen so many people talking about it and it just seems right up my street. So in this world, we're following our main character, Rune, who is actually a witch and in this society, witches are hated, they are hunted and killed. So she's recently lost her grandma who was also a witch. But So Rune actually spends most of her nights at something that is called the Crimson Moth. So her role is to, during the night time, rescue witches as their vigilante and their hero to save them from society as well as hiding who she is day to day and obviously hiding her alter ego. When one of her little missions goes badly, she actually ends up meeting a witch hunter called Gideon so she decides that to throw everyone off her scent that she's a witch and she's doing all this helping for everyone else within her witchy society she decides to court him and and obviously feeling is getting involved and things become very complicated because they should be enemies and at the end of the day they are destined to kill each other so this just sounds so amazing and I cannot wait to delve into this. this is probably the first one of this list that I will be reading before the end of the year. On to our second book, we have none other than The Throne of Gas and probably the whole series by Sarah J Mass. By Sarah J Mass. And if you haven't heard of this, I don't know where you've been, maybe you've been living under a rock, but it's probably one of the most talked about fantasy series ever, along with her other series, Akita, which I've recently read and, and adored, which is why I'm keen to pick up The Throne of Glass series and continue with reading Sarah's work. So in the first book of The Throne of Glass, we are following our main character, Selena and she's actually an assassin that has been in kind of like a prison situation for quite a long time now however she's one day is summoned to become like the king's personal assassin and she comes to the castle not to kill the king but to actually fight for her freedom so she enters a like contract where if she is able to to defeat 23 other killers like crime assassin kind of people in this competition she'll then become the king's personal assassin but she soon finds out that it's not as easy as things seem because she can almost sense this like evil being within the castle and all of her competitors start dying one by one like outside of the trials and challenges so it's probably going to be down to her to figure out what's going on and potentially destroy it and save like the whole kingdom it just sounds so good i've heard it's like a love triangle situation as well and there's nothing better than two men fighting over a strong female character like do not get me started i'm so excited to read it although the one thing that does scare me is obviously tower of dawn and the other one like the fourth and fifth or whatever book they are people recommend to do tandem read however i think when i get to it i may read them separately just because when i'm like out and about carrying two big books with me it's just not ideal and practical and also the last book is over a thousand pages i'm pretty sure so it's a big ask and it'll probably take up three weeks of reading if i'm on a roll but i think that's probably my goal to read around october-ish time just because it's giving like halloweeny vibes full vibes assassins you know gonna be moving on to a bit more of a a bit more of a romance kind of feel we have book lovers by emily henry so i've read one book by emily henry before which was which was happy place one of my favorite reads of this year so far so i just know that her writing is probably going to match it and i'm going to like a lot of her books so with book lovers we have got nora stevens who works as a literacy agent and she kind of ha i 
think her career probably takes over her life a little bit. She loves her job and her clients. They adore her and worship the ground she walks on as well as her little sister Libby, which is why she ends up agreeing to go to a small town for an like, August trip away with her younger sister. So as you can imagine, Nora is probably thinking, oh, small town, might have a little summer romance, have a fl fling and maybe even meet the love of my life. However, she keeps bumping into a fellow editor from where she's from, Charlie. And it would be a meet cute, however it's not cute because the times they've met before they just haven't got on. I think it's obviously the rivalry within the industry, it probably just makes that relationship extremely complicated. And I feel like it kind of sounds like a journey where they'd probably be finding themselves as well as finding each other. And the way Emily Henry writes and describes her locations, and I'm so happy that this one is also set in like a beachy location similar to Happy Place because that just made it so easy to imagine and I was just able to open the book and just go into another world and enjoy some of my favourite ever characters because Emily Henry creates non-annoying characters in my opinion anyway like Wynne and Harriet from Happy Place love every bit about them even their friends and like the side characters they were great you know there's a few that you just don't want to listen about I was intrigued with the whole friendship group and I'm just happy. I just can't wait to delve into another one of her novels. Switching it back to fantasy, our next book is Carabao by Stephanie Garber. Now, this is something that I've heard a lot about because I know that the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy basically takes place after this. So they recommend reading Carabao trilogy before that. So in order to get to that, I need to read this series and I want to do it very soon because they all just sound so, so good. Obviously don't have a physical copy, so an image will be inserted as I speak about it. So our two characters that we kind of follow from what I have seen are two sisters, Scarlett and Tella. And they live with their father who is described as powerful, but also very cruel to them and probably to other people as well. Now the actual premise of this book actually confuses me slightly. So basically, Scarlett has always had this wish to visit this place called Carabao, this wonderful, spectacular thing that goes on. It's like a once a year performance kind of thing. So somehow Scarlett's sister is able to get them onto a boat and travel to Carabao. And when they arrive, they figure out or find out that they find out that the Carabao that year actually revolves around Teller and people have to find her in order to win this competition. And the girls are told that everything that happens at Carabao is basically one big performance so they kind of get swept up into it and I've heard that sometimes you don't know what's real or what's an illusion type of thing so this would be it kind of sounds like a psychological fantasy and I know there's romance in it as well I have heard so ticking all my boxes this book is and it needs to be read it just can't wait to be on my TBR car and in my hands reading cannot wait for those like autumnal evenings in fantasy worlds. At the halfway point of this video, the next book is The Seven Year Slip. And I've heard so much about it. It's almost, it sounds like a romance fiction novel with hints of fantasy. And it's not like magical powers and things, but we're basically following our main character called Clementine and she's overworking herself and she does this because she doesn't want to fall in love and get hurt and have her dreams kind of, you know, the path of life. She doesn't want to be steering off of it, which is fair play, girl. You do you. Stay away from me. However, one day she is basically in her late aunt's apartment and there's this man there and she falls for him. They get to know each other, things progress. However, she soon discovers that this man is living seven years in the past. So whenever she's in this apartment, she basically is like traveling back seven years, I think. And I don't know how it's gonna work, but I'm hoping that hopefully like the timelines connect or it's gonna be really sad. And yeah, it just sounds like one of those easy kind of fluffy romances that you can just pick up and enjoy and just get through. And it'll probably be cringe at some points. I know as most romances are, but I'm intrigued to see what Ashley Poston's writing is like as well because obviously never read a book by her and this one is very popular so I do hope that it's worth the hype. Up next is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. So this book explores 
some quite powerful themes like relationships in wartime, the emotional connection that the written word can offer, and also the dangers of censorship. So when two rival journalists find love through this like magical connection, they must face the depths of hell in a war among gods to seal their fate forever. Now, if you didn't get everything that you were looking for from this book description, then I don't know what to tell you, you're in the wrong place because that just, chef's kiss for me it sounds amazing and i know that there is like a mix method writing in it so obviously they include these letters and things and i love that in a book like emails text messages letters it just adds so much depth and gives the chance for a lot of humor to come through as well and i also have always enjoyed reading books that are set in a war kind of era so this is right up my street and oh, all of these books i just want to get to right now Maybe I'll just read them all next week and then I'll make a new one of these. No, my bank account can't handle that. <laughs> I'm sure you'll all be expecting this one from my previous love for the Chestnut Spring series, but it is Wild Love by Elsie Silver. So this came out maybe like two months ago now and I've been meaning to pick it up and get to it, but obviously currently on a book buying ban. So when the time comes, it'll come for me to purchase that. But I just love Elsie Silver's writings. She honestly is the queen of small town romance. I wouldn't go anywhere else because I don't trust anyone else, but I will eventually try other people as well. So in Wild Love, we're following billionaire Grant, who, who is basically hiding out in this place called Rose Hill, a small town, to almost pursue his dreams as a musician. And being in this small area also gives him the chance to hide from the press, because I'm sure where he's originally from, probably a big city, that people know who he is. And he gets followed around a lot and probably struggles to have a positive social life. And then one day a young girl basically reveals to him that he is her father. And I've not read a book with that trope yet. So I'm very intrigued to see if I'll like it, if I'll get along with it. And I'm pretty sure it's Grant Willer's brother from Heartless. So everything interconnects and maybe we'll get a cameo as well. So very much looking forward to having this on my TBR and eventually reading it. Our next book, I actually have the physical copy of once again, and this is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. So I'll read just a little bit of the back. So it's got, when a fake relationship between scientists meets the irresistible force of attraction, it throws one woman's chaos, carefully calculated theories on love into chaos. So as a scientist, we're following our main character, Olive, who basically doesn't believe in true love. And her fellow scientist or friend, does believe and she's trying to convince her that it can happen and you can be happy you can meet the right one in this world and obviously as a scientist she requires proof so apparently she basically goes and kisses the first person that she sees who happens to be our other character adam who is a sexy hot professor and he's a well-known playboy mean guy probably a grumpy dude i hope because i love that and this basically leads into a fake dating situation. And I love fake dating because it just provides people to one, have a connection without having all the spice and things. Cause usually they don't do that straight away because they're faking it and the feelings need to grow and they probably are in denial about feeling it for each other. And I just love it. The angst, the feelings, everything. It speaks to my soul. Yes, this is the Love Hypothesis for Ellie Hazelwood. I can't wait to see if I enjoy it because I loved Bride by her. Even though there was obviously weird scenes in it, it was still a good book for me and the writing was top notch. The second to last book on this little end of year TBR is The XX. And this is just seems like a fun little book that I'm definitely going to be reading for Halloween. I may even do like a little Halloween -y reading vlog on like books that are focused on like magic and witches, even though that's kind of what I read all year anyway. But ones that seem a little bit more specifically Halloween-ish. I'd also love to get to some Stephen King books, but I'm not including those in this video because that's literally just come to my head. So with the XX, basically our main character, our main character Erin breaks up with her boyfriend like seven years ago or something. And she puts just a little, you know, a little curse on him. And she thinks, oh, it's just a little thing it'll mean nothing and then I think he moves away and then eventually it comes back and we're in the present day now and he returns in kind of near the annual like fall Halloween-y festival that they have in their town 
and things start going drastically wrong to him like I can't even describe what it's going to be like I think it's going to be humorous funny probably touching at times as well and I'm kind of hoping that it's going to be a second chance romance because there's nothing better than those so yeah I just wanted to pop that one in here because it's a little fun seasonal book that I would definitely be getting to our final book that I'll be speaking about today is nothing like the movies by Lynn Painter so it doesn't come as a shock no because if you read if you watched my 24 hour readathon that I posted last week you'll know that I read better than the movies in it and it was so good six stars for me if I could give it and it just made me want to pick up the next one in that little series that Lynn Painter has so this one is nothing like the movies and I won't talk too much about it because if you haven't read the first book I don't want to ruin it for you but we're basically following the couple from that book in the second and they're kind of they've gone to college they've grown up a little bit and they're now trying to have this same cutesy rom-com relationship that our main character strived for and obviously it becomes harder when you're at college you have new friendship groups parties more distractions and they're probably a lot busier as well compared to when they were in high school so I'm intrigued to see what the challenges will be like and how it will end up and I hope it will be a happy ending please please Lynn Painter because don't break my heart okay and there we have it that is the 10 books that I've put onto a little end of year TBR to share with you guys let me know if you've read any of them please and if you like them what were your thoughts because I love hearing people's opinions of books that I'm about to read. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.